Hello, geography students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 14, Section 3, Life in East Asia, Part 1. So as we go along, make sure you have your packet handy so you can take your notes. China, in number one, has a population of over 1.37 billion people, making it the world's most populous country. That's more than all of Europe, Russia, and the United States combined. But only 10% of the people in China live in the West. The rest are jam-packed into the East. Uh, most people live in the East, live in crowded cities, near rivers, basins, valleys, deltas, um, or along China's coastal plains. China's population continues to grow at a rate of about 7.5 million people each year. Cities in China with more than 4. Point, or more than 4 million people are most likely to be located along coast and along major rivers. China's largest city is Shanghai with over 13 million people living there. It's located where the Yangtze River meets the East China Sea. It is China's leading seaport, industrial, and commercial center. Japan is densely populated for a country that has an area smaller than the state of California. It has four times as many people living there than the state of California. And most people live in crowded cities like Tokyo or Osaka. Uh, Tokyo is so densely populated that land is scarce, leading to high real estate prices, and some people save money for years to buy homes in cities like Tokyo. Taiwan is a modern country with a population of about 23 million people. Uh, North Korea is a largely urban nation, and its largest city is Pyongyang, which is located in the western part of the country. It is also a very crowded city with more than 3 million people living there. South Korea is densely populated as well. Seoul is one of the most densely populated cities in the world with over 40,000 people living per each square mile. Mongolia, on the hand, is sparsely populated. It is slightly larger than the state of Alaska and has about 2.7 million people living there. It's about kind of like Nebraska in a way. Uh, nearly half of Mongolia's people live as traditional nomads, herding livestock across Mongolia's vast grasslands, and many of them make their homes in what is known as a gur, uh, which is a large circular felt tent uh, that is easy to put up and to take down and to move. In number 12, about 92% of Chinese identify their ancestry as Han Chinese, but many Han Chinese speak what is known as Mandarin, uh, which is the official language of China. There's different dialects. Cantonese is another one that's very popular, kind of in the southern part of China. But in number 13, some 55 other ethnic groups make up the remaining 8% of China's population. And many of these groups live in the west or southern parts of China where they have their own distinct culture. And in some cases, um, their culture might be more in common with their neighboring nations like India or uh, if we start taking a look at Central Asia and, and some of the uh, nations that are there. In number 14, nearly everyone in Japan speaks Japanese. Uh, the Japanese language had no formal written um, language until around 500 years ago uh, when Chinese characters were introduced and is considered to be very complicated to learn as a language due to its system of writing. If you take a look here at one of the diagrams to the left, uh, you notice that a lot of these words look like they're going vertically, meaning that they're going straight down. And that technically is usually the way they write. Matter of fact, um, if you had a set of loose leaf papers uh, that you know, a typical student would have in Japan, it would probably look more like graphing paper because you want columns to be straight um, and each little box in the graph uh, would be for a separate character. In both North and South Korea, people speak Korean. Uh, the Korean language is written with a, an alphabet where the letters are combined to form words, a little bit like what our language is in a sense. 
China's two main belief systems when we talk about religion are Taoism and Buddhism. Uh, just so you know, Taoism did originate in China, but Buddhism uh, actually was brought to China from India. Taoism stresses living simply in harmony with nature, and the name Tao means the way. Uh, probably one of the bigger symbols for Taoism is the yin yang, which you see kind of over on the right hand side of your screen. Buddhism came to China from India around AD 100, and this religion is based on the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama, who was a prince who lived in India from the year 563 to 483 BC. Buddhists don't have a deity, they don't have a god, but they do follow um, a certain uh, set of rules that lead to a, a good moral behavior, a certain level of kindness, and they use meditation um, to lead kind of to a, a peaceful uh, life. Confucianism is a philosophy based on the ideas and teaching of a man named Confucius, who was a philosopher. And this philosophy stresses the importance of family, moral values, and respect for one's elders. Ancestor worship and fortune telling are also very popular among the Chinese people. China's government is a communist government, and not only are you going to find it in China, but you're also going to find it in North Korea. And these governments typically discourage the practice of religion. And number 23, uh, Buddhism was brought to Japan from Korea, the mainland Asia, and Buddhists have built shrines and temples all over Japan, some dating back to the earliest days of Buddhism in Japan. Shintoism or Shinto, is a native religion to the Japanese islands. And according to Shinto teachings, nature spirits, sometimes known as kamis, live throughout the world, meaning that everything has a certain spirit within nature, trees, flowers, such. Shintoists believe that everything in nature has kami, meaning it has a spirit. And they believe the kami helps people live and keeps them safe from any kind of harm. Uh, the people of Japan have built shrines to the kami, and they perform ceremonies to ask for their blessings. Uh, number 25, Chinese porcelain, or sometimes as it's known as China, uh, which was developed by ancient Chinese, is highly prized for its quality and beauty. Um, some people, even in the United States, have prized China. Calligraphy, uh, which is a decorative form of writing, is very popular and it's featured in some of the different paintings. Calligraphy is used in pretty much every uh, language, written language, when we talk about um, the eastern part of Asia. Pagodas, which you see kind of pictured here in the middle, that building is a shape that you usually see for Buddhist temples. It's multi-storied. Uh, it's usually in the shape of a tower uh, with upward curving roofs at the uh, for each floor. And where we're going to leave today here, talking about Tai Chi, which is a form of martial arts, of unarmed combat, which is really popular in China. Uh, for the most part, it has a lot to do with um, a type of exercise that's practiced as not only exercise, but a means of stress reduction or management or spiritual development. Thank you very much.